Hey guys, welcome back. It is Friday. That means it's time for another Captain Foley Eagle Moss product review. And today we're looking at one of my guilty pleasure ships. That sounded really bad, like pleasure, pleasure ship. Um, this is a ship that we see a few times, uh, only once in this form, uh, but then reused through TNG as various other ships of the week. Maybe sometimes modified, sometimes not, sometimes just the color. But it's an interesting little ship. Uh, today we're going to, of course, be talking about the Merchantman um, cargo ship. Uh, basically the horseshoe crab of the Star Trek family. Besides the Decora, the Marauder, you know, it's the same kind of thing. But this is issue one, number 143. Um, great shot of the ship there on it. Beautiful ship. Really is. Um, and down here we've got some of the, the facts here. Type freighter, launch 23rd century. Length 150 meters, max speed warp 5. So, yeah, when you open it up, of course, you got the standard how to put it on the stand instructions. Uh, interesting shot of it from the front. You never really see it from the front. I didn't realize there was a huge fin on the bottom of it for till I got this model, to be absolutely honest with you. Um, so, interesting, different take on it from the front there. Here we got some more statistics as well, which we'll talk about. Operated by independent type freighter, an operation 23rd century, length 150 meters approximately, crew of three, max speed warp five, and weaponry phasers. So, only a crew of three. That's okay. Uh, we got a bunch of different uh, shots here of different uh, close up images of the ship, but we'll look at that when we take a look at the ship. Uh, here we go. It starts out with, uh, the Merchant Man is a rundown freighter that met its end during the uh, handover of illicit data to the Klingons. Um, the female Klingon operative Valkris directed the captain of the and the helmsman of the Merchant Man to be to a prearranged meeting point with Commander Crude's Bird of Prey, Bird of Prey. She had hired the rogue group from, to steal data regarding the Genesis device, but instead of being paid for their efforts, they were rewarded with a volley of disruptor fire. So, there's a shot of it getting destroyed by the Klingon bird of prey. Uh, here's some an interesting uh, side and top view of it. Uh, really nice little ship, I gotta say. Uh, never really struck me the first few times I saw it I don't think but the more I saw it the more I liked it and then I saw it a few times in TNG and I was like that's an interesting design um, I want to learn more about that so this book is actually pretty great for that uh, here we go designing the merchant man it's got an early design there which is pretty similar to the one that we finally get it says here art director Nilo Rodas designed the merchant man to be a dis uh, to be a dis a dismal, oh, dismal. <laughs> it says dismal, and then like a a dismal-looking ship that stood no chance against the Klingon's bird of prey. Uh, here's another cool little sketch right up there as well, and uh, there we see it in TNG and in Deep Space Nine, making various appearances because it was a cool little model. So why not reuse it? And it goes to talk about visual effects for Star Trek Three. Great shot of the Excelsior chasing the Enterprise there. That is one of the classic um, pictures I remember from my youth because it had the same picture on the front of the Star Trek III um, photo book. Some different versions of Space Dock all on the side there. And on the next page, more of the same. You got the Space Dock model, uh, the interior Space Dock. The bird of prey model here, and the alien worms, the microbes that were attached to the torpedo's surface that evolved. Uh, so very cool behind the scenes information in here. Here's the destruction of the Enterprise, how that was accomplished. They got the Klingon dog, and then more of the Enterprise destruction. Sad, sad thing that was. Then talk about the Genesis planet, how they created those effects, and the bird of prey, of course, escaping from the Genesis planet as it explodes. So, 
and then there's uh, on screen it says when you first see it in Star Trek 3 and then there's Gomto issue 144 it's Tin Man which I probably will never get because I don't care for it on the back you got a nice shot of the ship from the top and it's a very cool looking ship I gotta say so let's look at the model here it is in the thing um, or this way if you prefer so just the standard packaging but when you get it out it's far from standard it's a good size and the detail on it is phenomenal like phenomenal the attention to detail on this model is just incredible which we're going to get into I mean, you start at the front, uh, you got a lot of nice detailing there, this little part that sticks out at the front. You got the bridge module, and I gotta say, the, the coloring on this, the coppery um, rust rose color almost, is stunning. The, the plate detail is very impressive at the front here. Um, just different colored plates really add a real dimension to it. You got these silvery, uh, almost aluminum steel colored um, areas which are reminiscent of what we see on these uh, Reliant at the back of that uh, so that's very cool you got these long things that trail off I'm not quite sure what those are uh, if they're I don't think they'd be phasers pointing backwards but something great detail in here make it looks really old and you know oily and weathered which is great a lot of good greeblies in there um, moving to the back section you got more of the same along the side just really really detailed it's it's really impressive this model I gotta say the back the the four engines is pretty substantial uh, from the side they look really good from the back they look even better you've got like yellow inset plastic in there which is a nice touch. Looks like they're lit up and they're firing, uh, which is fantastic. This is, uh, the attention to detail in this one and not some of their hero ships like the Akira, the small Akira, baffles me. It just baffles my mind how they can put this much care and make this such a beautiful model, but the Akira is kind of lackluster. Uh, moving to the bottom, we got these little ports here, uh, little intakes or whatever they are, uh, but nice little detail. And some really nice, nice, greebly work, nerny, whatever you want to call them. Uh, just some fantastic detail in that front part. Um, and again, it looks very much like a horseshoe crab, uh, which I think they use as an inspiration. But um, more of the same in the middle here. Really interesting black and gold colored weathering, which looks great. And then, of course, this fin at the bottom, which... I didn't even know it was a thing, but it's a perfect place to hold it. And See, I wasn't holding it. But yeah, a little fin at the bottom there, sticking out. So, that's basically it, guys. There you go. Uh, fantastic little model. I really, really, really like this one. Like this... Like I said, it's kind of been a guilty pleasure for years as far as the ship goes, but now that I have the model, this thing is impressive. Out of a lot of the other Eagle Moss models that I have, this is one that I would actually display. Uh, a lot of them are going to stay in the box because I don't have the room for them to display them, so they stay in the box for now until I have the room. But this is one that I want to find a spot for and eager, I'm eager to get it out because it's just so detailed and so nice. It's just, it's really, really impressive, guys. Like... Uh, but anyway, enough of me jibber jabber, and let's head on over to the. Uh... Ooh, I gotta point that out first. There's this little thing on the side here, which is loose, it could move, um, but it's asymmetrical. It's not on the other side. Um, so that's neat, actually. I never noticed that before. It's like an antenna or something, and it's more of a flexible rubber or pl or plastic. So. But anyway, let's head on over to the stand, check it out, and uh, then call this video a wrap. And here it is on the stand. Get a nice close-up view of a lot of those details. I mean, it 
is really impressive this one. I, like I praise a lot of the Eagle Moss ships, but and I, I also point out the problems with them because uh, you know even though they are a sponsor of ours and we have the discount or the affiliate program with them, we uh, I like to be honest with you guys. This one is very much a get it. You, you got to get this one if, if, even if you're remotely a fan of this or Star Trek Three or anything. To see this one in person is really impressive, guys. It really, really is. This one they went above and beyond for, as far as I'm concerned. So, it's going to be my recommendation to get this one. Uh, so. On a lower shelf, it looks great, you know, from multiple angles. Fantastic. We put it on an eye-level shelf. Again, it's got really cool dimensionality. It looks really cool from so many different angles. So, it works on an eye-level shelf, certainly. Um, if we put it up on a high shelf... There we go. Sorry about the backlight, but... Again, the detail work there, it's almost worth putting on a high shelf. Because in Star Trek Three, the first time we see it is from below. And the Bird of Prey decloaks right over top of it. And this ship was meant to be about the same size as the Bird of Prey. But then the Bird of Prey looks so much bigger. And, ugh, just a pain. <laughs> Sizing in Star Trek, I tell you. Um, so there we go. It does just kind of slot in there it's not super secure so if you're moving it around it might slide so be mindful of that you don't want to have it pop out of the of the stand there but so guys if you want this head on over to uh, Eagle Moss use the link in the description below it takes you straight there uh, you can check out a lot of the ships they have add them to your cart and at checkout if you want to use the discount code Trekyards you can save yourself 15% off orders of $50 or more. So just keep in mind that some of the special um, special edition ones, the larger ones, the XLs, uh, the discount code might not apply to those, but give it a shot anyway. Um, it does help out quite a bit, and it's helped out quite a few people, so we love doing that. So anyway, guys, until next time, I am Captain Man, talking about the Merchant Man, and uh, it's a fantastic, fantastic model and ship. So... Subscribe to both channels. Check out all the cool stuff we have. Lots of great videos to watch. So, so check them out and enjoy yourself while you're here. And come back for more, guys. Every Friday we got Eagle Mouse reviews and Captain's Logs and so much other cool stuff all week long. So until next time, guys, I'm Captain Foley. Bye-bye.